Hi everyone. In this video I'd like to talk about creating dynamic interactive PDF stamps. If you haven't used the comment tools much in Acrobat and especially if you haven't created any dynamic PDF stamps then the information here may be new to you. And I'm going to step through the process of creating these stamps and then making them interactive as well. As you can see on screen, I have a stamp here. Now, before I go too far, the one thing I want to explain to you is that you have an incredible number of options and capabilities with creating dynamic stamps. And it can be used in virtually every kind of business you can imagine, from the law profession to accounting to business operations and very much of what you'll see here in some of the capability that I'll talk about. Now, before we go too far, I want to offer a disclaimer. PDF stamps are so elaborate and so extensive that there's been actually a book written on PDF stamps. This book was written by a good friend of mine, Tom Parker, who is probably the world's leading authority on Adobe Acrobat JavaScript. And I helped Tom just a, a very minor bit of help in doing some review on this book when he wrote it. We've been friends for over 25 years and I just want to say up front that I really recommend this book to anyone who's interested in creating dynamic stamps but I want you all to know that it, I don't make any money on this. I just did it as a favor to Tom. And also if you're interested in JavaScript, Tom runs a site called pdfscripting.com and this site will give you just an incredible number of ways that you can use JavaScript for not only forms, but every kind of Acrobat file that you can imagine. So uh, once again, uh, I don't get anything out of uh, either one of these things that Tom operates, but I want to point it out because he is uh, certainly an exceptional authority on everything I talk about in my channel and so much more and he'll be a very big help if you decide to subscribe to PDF Scripting or get Tom's book on PDF Stamps. So that being said, let's go back to our stamps over here. The very first thing that you want to do is find out where your stamp file is located. When you create a stamp, you can create a whole new stamp file. Adobe has provided a stamp file for you and it's, uh, it holds all the dynamic stamps and the stamp options that you have in creating stamps, standard and dynamic and what have you. But you, when you create your own stamps in a separate file, then you need to know where that location is because you're going to need to interact with those. So to find that location, I have a text over here. I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to bring up my JavaScript debugger. That's Control J on Windows, Command J on the Macintosh, and bring up my window. And I'll just paste in this uh, text that I copied. And if you're on a laptop computer, you may want to hold the Control or the Function key down when you strike the Enter key, because you need to strike Enter and not Return. And when you do, a readout will show you the directory path for the location of the stamps folder that Acrobat installs during its installation process. Now on the Macintosh, you're going to see a very different low path description here than you do on Windows. On the Macintosh, it's going to say Macintosh HD, and then you, if HD is the name of your hard drive, and it'll say users and then your name and then it's going to say library and the way you access the library is in the finder you hold the option key down and go to the go menu and open that menu and you'll see library listed there you can't find it unless you hold the option key when you open that menu then you go into library and then the next folder is application support adobe Acrobat and DC is the nested folders in that path. And that's where you're going to find your file 
that you create when you create a new dynamic stamp and you create a new category for that stamp. This is a stamp file that I have that is located in my stamps folder and currently I have three stamps here. I'll talk about these. The first thing you want to know uh, how to do is to create a dynamic stamps and if you click on the more tools button over here in your tools panel you're going to see stamp in share and review section and you want to click on that and go to add if it's not added already over to uh, your tool panel and that's what you would want to do to add this tool in your toolbox over here on the right and when I click on this tool I'm going to see four different menu options up at the top. Under custom settings, this is where we find the create menu command to create a new dynamic stamp. So if I click on create, it's going to ask me to browse my hard disk to find the location for the stamp that I want to add as my new dynamic stamp. And I'll just go ahead and get uh, this uh, stamp that I have. This is a design now and the design can be created in any application where you can create a graphic design. So that would be Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, any of the Microsoft Office applications, uh, Publisher, Excel, Word. Uh, you can also use Google Docs and uh, Canva. GIMP, any application that you use that you can create a graphic with uh, images and text. So in this particular case I just created this in Adobe InDesign. I'll click on it and open it and here is the design for my stamp. It's the same stamp I have in my background here and when I click OK then I'm going to be prompted to add a category. Now I can choose an existing category or I can just type a name and this will create a new PDF file that's going to be located in that stamps folder. So I'll call this uh, test stamps and the name is very important. You want to use a unique name here. Don't leave it at new stamp because uh, that name is going to be helpful to you. So let's say we want to call this um, uh, test approved. And I'll click OK. Now if I go up to my stamp drop down menu you can see that I have test stamps and test approved and this is where I can create this stamp and it will go to into that document. Now I'm not going to do that because what I've done is I have open a file that's in my stamps folder and these are my stamps. So what I'll do is take a look at first of all this first stamp. Once you create the stamp, these fields I added after my stamp was created. And the best way that you can add fields is don't just click on this uh, prepare form button because that's going to ask you to, the, to resave the file and everything. Just take a field from any document and paste it in to this file and this entire document will now become a PDF form and you don't have to worry about uh, saving it and going through all the nonsense when you create a PDF form in Acrobat. Now let's take a look at what's going on here. I added these fields. I'll open this field up and this is a script that is going to take the identity name that I have configured in Acrobat and I'll show that to you in a moment. I'll just get out of this and what we want to do is go to preferences and take a look at where we have identity information. So if I hold my control key down that was on Windows or the command key on Mac and hit K, control K or command K, you see that in the left panel you have identity and here's where you have identity information. Each one of these items can be accessible to a script written on a stamp. 
So I have the name as, and I just use this as a bogus name now for this uh, tutorial, John Hancock, and I have an email address here as jhancock at independence.com. So I'm going to use that information in some of my scripts. So once again, I'll go back over here, double click on this field. This is asking for the reviewer. And what I want to do is I want to get the identity name of the reviewer. Now you could create an application response dialog box and prompt the user to type in a name. That's one thing that could be done. But it's not necessary if it's your own computer and you fill out the identity information. The other thing that's very important is this name up here. Each one of the stamps that you create is going to create a template. And that template is going to be a name, a rather squirrely name as Acrobat creates it here. You can see that name is very foul right there. And the way you get that is, once again, you can go to your More Tools and add your Page Templates button to your Tools panel. I'll click on this. I've added mine, so I'm going to click on it. And then I'm going to double click or click on Page Templates here. And you can see that I have a template that corresponds to each one of the stamps that I've created. I have three stamps in this file and three templates. So what I want to do is I want to get the name of the template for this file here. And I know that I called it approved. This template name is GL Review. That's not the one I want. I want one that's called approved. And here I have it, GL Approved. That's the template for this uh, particular design. So I would need to click on this. And then once I select it here, I'm going to come up to the top and I want to copy this up to the equal sign here. So there's a A and then equal. I'm going to copy the A. And I'm going to go Control or Command C to copy that. I'll close this. And when I come over to my field here and I open up the script, what you want to do is and then we're going to delete it and make sure that you just have the quote marks there no straggling uh, characters are, are left behind you want to make sure that's very clean and then paste in your template name and then you can type the rest of this script okay and that script is then configured to take the identity name and put that as the reviewer. Now if you take a look at this stamp here, then I have in this field box right here, let's take a look at the script here, this is not getting the name of the template. All it is is it's saying this get field blah 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 here and it's got until you till printed and then it's got the date format that's here, new date. And you just you can just copy and paste this, and you just need to worry about the field name here. So if your field name is different, you just change it here, and the rest of this is the same. If you want M M D D Y Y, you just put in that information here between the quote marks, and Acrobat will pick up the formatting. Okay. Then I've got this is a job number. Okay, so. What you see is I've got this name again that I have to get for my template. So let's go back to templates. And what I want to do, this is a reviewer stamp. So I want to get reviewers. So if I come over here, this is GL approved. That's not the one. This one is GL approved. This one is GL review. So I'm going to select this come up here to the top and click and then once again up to the equal sign I'm going to click and drag across to copy all that information and I just want to make sure that I got everything here just just to be on the safe side okay and I'll copy that and then what I'm going to do is come over here to job again and I would paste that information in here, and then here's the rest of the script 
that's going to prompt me in an application response dialog box and ask me to type in a job number. And the same is going to hold true for the uh, revision number. If this is being reviewed, let's say it's reviewed several times, you want to know what revision uh, number that may be. The status is going to be either approved, rejected, or revised. I'm going to take a look at that script here. And you can see that I have an application response. And then what's in quotes is going to appear in the dialog box, but you're going to type one of these values in the field in the application response dialog box that appears. Okay, once again, the file name or the template name, I should say, is going to appear within the quote marks up here. Okay, and then the reviewer, this is just going to get the identity information that I mentioned earlier. So if you have your identity filled out, then it's going to pull that information. So let's see how these work. Okay, so let's take a look at these stamps in action. All right, I'll go over to a blank document over here and let's see what we can do with adding those stamps to a blank page. I'll go to my stamp. I've got my stamp tool selected over here in the tools panel and I'll go to the top up here. I'll go to stamp and there's a drop down menu here. These are where all my stamp categories are listed. The category that I had named previously was called my stamps. So let's take a look at the first one here, GL review. And I click and you can see that the reviewer and email are fields that are derived from my identity preferences. Once again, let me show those to you. Control on Windows or Command on the Mac plus K. Control K or Command K opens the preferences. You can see under identity, I have a bogus name here called John Hancock and a bogus email address over here. And that information is being picked up by the script in this document. Okay, let me delete that. And we'll use another example. Let's go over to stamps again. I'm go to my stamps and I want to go to GL approval. This is actually a review, but we'll just go ahead and leave it like that. Now watch when I click, uh, application response dialog box appears and it first asks me for the job number. Say this is 0341 is the job number. Click OK and it follows with the next script in the order of those fields. So this one is asking for the revision number. So I'm going to say 003 for the revision number. This is going to ask me for the status and once again that's approved, rejected, or revised. So let's call this revise. I'll click OK. And then the reviewer is once again derived from the identity. And you can see that these fields now are populated. This one also has the date field that I explained earlier. So you can see that these dynamic stamps are, you can make them interactive. You can add radio buttons and check boxes. You can add button fields and you can add text fields. If you haven't already created dynamic stamps, once you get into using it, you'll find many, many options for their use. Keep in mind that the file that you create or multiple files that you create are contained in your stamps folder and you should back those up in the event that you ever change computers or you get an upgrade to Acrobat and somehow the installation loses that folder or the documents contained in that folder. So be sure to back up your stamp files. Now, I hope this has been helpful for those of you who haven't experienced very much about interactive dynamic stamps. And once I guarantee once that you begin using it, you'll find many uses. Once again, this is Ted Padova wishing you all the very best in all your Acrobat activity. Until next time.